Welcome back to the channel. Today's game day, baby. I can feel it, I feel it. I feel like today I might be able to start the car, right? I'm trying to get everything back in the car, but I'm not gonna be able to start today. I just remember, I just remember I had to go oil. You know, I gotta get some other, you know, stuff for the car before I can even start it up, so that's gonna suck. But we're gonna be able to put the transmission back in the car and button up all the wires and everything and just get it ready for uh, fluids, right? But we got something that came in the mail today. Remember I talked about my last video about transmission stuff. I'm gonna take a look into it. Well, I decided not to open it up. Obviously I'm not a transmission mechanic or anything like that. I might be able to like take a look at it and see what's going on, but I'm not a transmission mechanic. Um, but anyway, I think the main issue I'm having is the shifter, the sticky shifter that I have is like the version one, uh, 1.0 and they had some issues popping out of gears and stuff like that. So. I decided to go ahead and place an order for a new one and I'm gonna show you what this sucker looks like right now because it looks 10 times better than what the ones in there currently. So let's crack open this box. One thing I do, I am sad about, it comes with a new lever, right? And the thread pitch and everything is not the same as my current ebony and ivy wood shifter. So I'm actually really sad about that. But I have something coming for it to replace it, so. It should be good, but look look at that. Look, this is, so for one thing, this being detached like this is gonna save me so much time getting the transmission back in the car because you don't have to tilt it and do all that crazy stuff. Anyway, look at this. Look how beefy this thing looks. I mean, ding, Gina. <laughs> I mean, look at that. That thing is beefy. So, and you can tell it has like, no play in it, like at all. If I take, we're gonna go downstairs. I'm taking a look at the one that's in there currently, and um, you're gonna notice the difference in it. But let's go. On top of that, I picked up a new V-band. I'm, I'm swear I'm the V-band killer. <laughs> I bust through so many V-bands because my car sits kind of low, and um, yeah, kind of sucks. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, guys. So here's the one that is in there currently. Uh, let me just show y'all. Look, look how much plays in that. I mean. Look how much like play is in that when it you know needs to shift in gears or whatever. It's just there's so much play. So you place this one with this one, ten times better. So let's get installing that and good to go. I hope y'all can see this. I got the wide angle on, so it should be able to uh, see everything I'm doing in here. Break open these. So there's only four bolts that hold this. Also, sorry about my neighbors decided to mow, which I gotta do too. <laughs> but. I just gotta manhandle this thing. Crack this sucker open. I just want to say thank y'all for watching. I mean, some people don't like sitting through all this, watching people build cars or fix cars, but hey, I like it. And I hope y'all enjoy it too. Thank y'all for sticking around. Just try to spread the word so we can get this channel growing so I can do other things, man. I got a lot of things on my mind I wanna do and I can't do it without the help of y'all. So, with that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> but, this is the last ball and I'll come right off. There you go. Okay, first of all, Look at the difference in the bulb, ball. I don't know if you can see that, but it's totally night and day. Uh, this overall CNC machine work on this one is just mind blowing. I don't know if y'all can see this, but make sure. Uh, Sticky, so when they designed it, they usually designed this for the GTO like transmission, but I'm wearing running a Camaro one. When doing so, you gotta change out this little bucket in here for a GTO version instead of uh, the F-body one that you're running or whatnot, so. 
that's already in there, so just go ahead and install it. Put So excited to drive now. <laughs> okay. All right. That's pretty much it for the, for the transmission video. <laughs> That's why we're gonna go ahead and drop this sucker into the car uh, and then start putting everything up. All right. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about is the height of this. So I don't know if I had to cut my transmission tunnel just a little bit more to fit this. If I do, we'll do it. But. Yeah, because I think it's a little, it's a tad bit higher than that one, obviously. And then here's my transmission. My transmission tunnel is only cut just a tad, like right here. So I'm thinking I might have to cut up to right there. If so, we'll do it. Knock it out. There's no biggie. It's just metal. I want to talk about something that every car guy should have or own, right? If you have a track car or something you work on and you maintenance a lot, transmission jack. If you don't have it, Go buy yourself one. I remember back in the day when I when I had the Z just a uh, VQ motor, right? <laughs> uh, change down the uh, the clutch and flywheel and stuff like that. I had to use two jacks, a skateboard. It, it was a mess, right? And then after ever since then, after that, I was like, bump all this. I'm going go get me a transmission jack, and it always saves saves my life, right? So you can get one of these. You can wrap a chain around it, and hold it in place, and you it's, you don't need yourself, right? One person, and then. But yeah, get yourself a transmission jack if you don't have one. Okay guys, we're almost there. Our transmission is almost matted. But, like I thought I would have to do, is trim some of this transmission tunnel. Right that spot where I got trim. It's just because the shifter's hitting there a little bit, as you can see. So, I'm gonna trim that up real quick. So you can bring this thing up. Almost there, look at that. Look With a little trimming. I'm gonna clean it up afterwards. I just had to cut where I needed to just to make it fit and then start building up the transmission. But uh, afterwards, I'll clean that up. But the transmission is touching. it. Just gotta put all the bolts together, put the trans uh, mount on, and then start buttoning everything underneath so I can lower the car. So. Yeah, we're getting there, boys. We're getting there, boys. Close. The headers installed. They are a pain, man. The driver's side is a pain to get in and bolting up. And then the passenger side is easy, though. Uh, the one thing I want to touch on is what I, my headers bolt, my exhaust headers bolt. Let me show you what I have. So I have the safety, I don't know if you can see it. Let's get it there. Like there's like these safety clips. So like the, um, the header bolts can't like spin and back off. Um, it's not necessary, but it's just one of those things that I, I got a while ago and when I first began to build, just, you know, precaution, but they're a pain to take off. They're pretty easy to put on, but like to take them, taking off those little C-clamps that hold that little uh, stopper on is just a pain, so. 
That's what it looks like right there. But now it's just to put everything back together on the top end and the bolt them exhaust uh, and then keep on moving trucking from here. So hopefully we can get it started this week and then head over to the shop so we can get alignment and bleed my hydro. So yeah. All right, guys, we're getting closer and closer. I can feel it. It's just close to starting up. Hoping I can start it today because I really want to take it to the shop tomorrow. But look out here. The whole engine is pretty much buttoned up. I just got tightened down the tank manifold and um, reroute this uh, around here. But everything else is installed, injectors, you name it, engine back in. I got to put my, I got to lift the car up and do my exhaust and put fluids in the transmission and then I can start putting fluids in the engine and then we can start it up and then we can cross fingers that everything works and then maybe take a round block see if everything's good to go for tomorrow and then I can take it to the shop but yeah we're so close oh but look at this the bike's done I'm gonna have a video of this coming shortly so take a look at that but anyway, engine in, everything's buttoned up. We back, baby, we back. We back. I have a confession. I suck at filming. <laughs> I, you know, when you get emerged into a project, you just can't step away and stop when the film and stuff. So I apologize for that. Please forgive me. Oh. Uh, Everything is buttoned up. Everything is good, exhaust, everything. I'm about to do fluids now. So before we do a first startup, I'm gonna bring y'all along with me. So I'm gonna go ahead and couple out with some oil. Uh, what do I use? I just use your standard mobile one for right now. There's no need to purchase anything. It's just your standard LS, right? So I got mobile one, five by 30, five by 130. So we're gonna fill this up with that. I do run an oil cooler and a seven quart like you know, pan and stuff like that. So I'm about probably like 10 quarts or so of oil. So we're gonna fill that in there. I'm gonna put some power steering cooler in there and then bleed my clutch and then we'll start it up. Okay, so, come on, let's do this. brought me something to eat. What you bring me? Um, a rice cake. A rice cake. Look at that. Ooh, with peanut butter on there. We're about to go down. Thanks, son. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Mmm. I'm gonna go around with these, man. Mm. Bleeding the clutch is one of my least favorite things to do. That with bleeding brakes. <laughs> so, yeah. So I usually set it up. Yeah, and then the bottom down there. It's a pain, it's a pain. Okay, it's coolant time. And I always use this compare, uh, paired up with my compressor. This makes the job a lot easier. It compresses the system and then you release it and then it sucks all the fluids uh, throughout the whole system. And then I can go and start it and then bleed it normally with like a normal uh, one of these on top. But it just makes the process go a little faster. And uh, we can go into the next step. And then you can check, and it helps with any leaks and stuff like that. It points them out, you know. I think we are ready to start this thing up. I'm gonna go ahead, already bumped the engine a couple times to build some pressure, oil pressure. So I'm gonna test out the injectors, make sure they're not leaking or anything, and see if they hold any, holds pressure and all that drive. So let's go ahead and kick this thing on. Get the fuel pump going. There. 
No leaks. Let's see. Let's pump prime it one more time. And there. All right, let's start. Let's start it. Let's start it. We got everything ready. I'm about to go for a little test drive to the gas station. But before I do, you know that I can't use my Ebony Ivy Wood shifter, shift knob. So the boys at, I think I'm gonna probably butcher his name. So somebody can uh, say it for me, Goichi? Goichi? I think that's how you say it. So let's open this thing up and see what's in here. Bam. What could this be? All right, got some stickers. You know, we always like these slaps. Don't put down our car somewhere. Got that raw. <laughs> Almost looks just like my Ebony Ivory, Ivory one, but this one, where is my Ebony Ivory one? I don't know. Oh, I'll even pull it out for you, Hall. Bam. So here's the one that I was rocking, right? It has a different thread pitch and everything. That's why I can't use it. Then the new, new. Woohoo, let's thread this beyond. Watch it be the wrong thread. <laughs> no, we good. I'm not that stupid. There you go. Oh, 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 fire! All right, let's go. One hour later. We had a little issue, guys. Just, just, just a tiny one. You know, the car fought me just a little bit, man. <laughs> I was about to smack the shit out of it, but anyway. All right, we were having a little problem. So the car started up and everything like that. First startup, as you saw in the video, right? Good on that. But this sounded off to me. It was just like, uh, it didn't sound right, like typical how my car sounds. So then I backed it out of the spot and then uh, I was trying to go down the street and it was giving me some hesitation in the beginning. And I was like, oh, great, uh, what, what's going on? For me, I brought it back in, checked everything, over everything, everything looked good. Um, then I was like, you know what? Let me bring out the scanner and look, let me scan the engine and start it up and see what's running and what, what are my parameters and whatever thing is set at, right? Um, so I'm doing so, I'm, so I'm running HP tuners, tuners, so I had a scanning feature on there, VCM scanner. And uh, I wanted to take, out, take a look at everything. Now what I noticed off the back is my map sensor was pegged at like 96, 98 KPA the whole time. Like it wouldn't change. And when I started the engine, it just stayed there. Um, so that leaves me to believe that it was broken, right? When I took out the map sensor and I took it, up, took it out and I smelt it, it was pretty much drenched in fuel uh, all on the sensor. So the sensor itself took a crap and it wasn't reading properly or anything like that. So I went out and purchased one. Luckily, you know, since it's a GM part, we can get them in pretty quick. Replace it, started the engine, and boy, does it run good now. It started, like usually when you start your engine, your map sensor should be about like uh, high 40s, low 50s KPA, and that's where it was at. And it sounded 10 times better. I'm happy to say, we bad boys. And boy, does it feel good, because the drift event is this weekend on Sunday, and we're gonna have a good old time. Now, I didn't get a chance to take it to the shop, and get a front end alignment like I wanted to, or bleed my handbrake, my hydro, uh, like I wanted to. I might kind of try to bleed it myself a little bit, but man, it's a pain for me to do that. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go to the track and have some fun. We're just gonna give it give it what we have. I've been driving without that hydro uh, working on me properly for a while, so uh, we'll just make it work. So, all right, so stay tuned guys for the next video, which will be at the track. Um, also too, I'm gonna drop the video of my bike getting built, probably here after this one. Um, just stay tuned, y'all. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Stay around. You know, share it.
grow this channel. Let's do it, man. Appreciate y'all, man. See you next time. Thank you.